episode four of A Beginner's Guide to Mixing Metal at Home with me, James MSV, and this episode we are going to be covering the vocals. Now, vocals are slightly tougher for me. I do sing in my own band, and I'm not the best singer in the world. We are going to be using an example of my own singing today, so apologies if it's not quite up to the standard you'd expect, but uh, I'm primarily a guitarist, so uh, there you go. But um, in a way, it does work in our favour because I can show you some good techniques to try and help when a singer is isn't the best and also show you how really with the proper processing you can get even a mediocre singer to actually sound really good when sat properly in the mix. And the first thing we really need to discuss before we even go into any plugins or any processing is the vocalists themselves. One advantage I've got, even though I may not be the best singer, is that I have good knowledge of what I'm going to be doing in the production side of things to make my voice sound better. And I can sing with that in mind. And with a vocalist, if you're not the singer yourself, if you're mixing someone else, you really want them to have an idea of what you're doing. If they're a good singer, they'll be able to adjust their technique for you, or if they're not such a good singer maybe when it comes to the recording you can do everything in your power or ask the engineer to do everything in their power to make your job as easy as possible there are reasons for this not just laziness um, mic technique for example is very important as well as the microphone um, if you are going to be mixing yourself and you're wondering what microphones to use it does make a big difference a cheap dynamic microphone will do the job but it will not sound as good as a condenser microphone condenser mic microphones uh, really bring out nice full bodiness in a, in a sound, especially for the voice. Uh, they're probably up to twice as much as a uh, dynamic, but if you can afford it, well worth it. Uh, I'm using a condenser one here and uh, actually, funnily enough, it does work against me slightly because it brings out a lot of the low mids, brings out a lot of the uh, breathing sounds and that works against us. So uh, a microphone that picks up everything can, you know, cause you problems as well. So onto mic technique, what I find I have have to do and what you may need to get other singers to do especially with something like metal where they're screaming um, or singing very powerfully is mic position or their position to the microphone it's always going to help you if they can maintain a certain distance a very a specific distance from the mic which you can do with a pop shield I recommend using one of them if you can that again helps with any uh, any nastiness and also stops or prevents you having to go through the sound wave later on and, and edit it through and through with every little pop and breath and stuff we'll be covering some of the uh, the waveform editing later but a pop shield is essential and also maybe different mic position I actually record with my condenser microphone on a side-on position with the microphone perpendicular to where I'm singing rather than straight on that you would see maybe in a live performance the reason for that is when I'm doing my screaming uh, I do tend to uh, with my pronunciation have a lot of purrs and sibilants and plosives that will be coming on to and also a lot of the sort of noise which can can be picked up in, in not such a nice way with my mic so I found it best to turn the mic sideways worth experimenting with and if you're not the one recording your vocalist hopefully you'll be given a uh, waveform by someone who did know what they were doing and managed to get the vocalist to record in the, the proper way to, to make your job a bit easier um, I did touch briefly there on pronunciation with the, my S's and F's the uh, fricatives of the sort of F noises that can cause problems you get sibilance which is the S's the that can cause uh, that's the most famous one that's why you get a something called a D S -er, which can reduce that and the third one are plosives which uh, from the P as you can hear are the really hard sort of G P D noises and again a good singer will try and reduce those a bit it's not not even uncommon for singers to sing different words or different letters to try and reduce uh, the amount that these uh, these letters are having on the on the signal when it comes to ds's i don't actually use them i don't like them they are a catch-all in many cases. What a DS will do is identify a frequency causing, say, something like that sound, and it will reduce that frequency. So it will reduce it across the board. It won't matter whether you're singing an S or, or singing a completely different sound. It will reduce that frequency across the board, and it can make the, the vocal sound a bit dull. Uh, what I prefer to do is actually go into the waveform and edit, uh, in particular, any individual parts that don't sound great. It's a lot of work, but it really does help. 
Now you may think I've gone a bit extreme by using waveform editing instead of processing to get rid of some of the undesirable effects, but uh, I assure you this is a technique that the professionals do use. Um, it really does help to make your voice sound better without taking away any of the natural characteristics that can occur through DSing and things like that. And in fact, if you want to know more about uh, how the pros do do things, I highly recommend a channel called uh, Extreme Vocal Studio. I'll put a link in the description and uh, coming up on screen now for you, run by a guy called Rodney. He's got a three-part uh, series on recording, mixing metal vocals, a uh, conversation between himself and a professional recording uh, engineer, I believe, maybe a producer. And uh, they really do know their stuff. Highly recommended if you want to go move on from this sort of beginner type stuff onto the more advanced. They will give you a lot of very good information uh, well worth checking out. So uh, just to give you a quick demonstration of the type of editing, waveform editing I'm talking about, if I go in here this is the vocals that I've recorded, this is uh, the chorus of a song. If we play that quickly just for you to have a, a quick listen. Revenge is nothing new to me, fuck them all and let them burn, cleanse this world of attention, pull a pin and watch them turn. Now, well, you may have noticed there's a couple of instances where there's a, the plosive and also a k noise. I think that still counts as a sort of plosive noise. They they cut through a bit and they're a bit annoying. Also, you will notice right at the beginning, you can see where I've taken a breath. I like to eliminate this type of noise. Any noise that you don't want there is, is adding to the overall energy and taking away from the nice noise. So if you can't hear it and you don't need to hear it, get rid of it. You will notice all the way through these waveforms when you look at vocals there's little breaths here that you can see i am in two minds as to whether i like to remove them or not it's, it's very easy to and even though i'm cutting the end off there without much you know going into it too too close up there's no way anyone's going to hear that truncation when it's recorded or when it's when it's played back to them it's fine to do that if you want but sometimes it can sound a bit unnatural i will often leave the breath in because it sounds more natural but uh, if you do notice the breathing uh, or someone's taking a really big gulp because they come to the end of a difficult bit then you may want to reduce that in volume or completely eliminate it a good trick for example if that breath there was too loud i could just normalize it right down or even further than that um, just experiment until you're not eliminating it so it's still there and it sounds a bit more natural i don't bother doing that often though with especially with these heavy vocals it's really that is not going to be heard uh, underneath everything else what i did here was a couple of annoying little plosives there was one in the word yeah, this little spike here. There was the uh, the word cleanse, and I go K cleanse uh, very very harshly, and you can see that peak there. What I would then do is in the envelope, see it's this area here. I would bring that right down and process that, and eliminate it as you can see there. And I'll just play that a little bit again for let, you. Let them burn, cleanse this. If I undo and play the original. Let them burn, cleanse this world. And then play the. Uh, let them burn. This world. That's the edited version. Again, you can see there's quite a difference in uh, the overall sound of that just one word. Now, you may think that was a bit extreme, uh, what I did with that word there and the, the k noise, but uh, it is worth doing. It's much, much better than using a de or a compressor. Some people try and try and use all sorts of tricks using side chaining and parallel compression and EQs and stuff. If you take the time to go into your waveform and tidy up the breaths and the peaks, it's much cleaner that way and you'll end up with a much more natural sounding audio file that you can work with. So moving on from there, the next thing to do, the always the magic touch, is double up on the vocal, just like with the guitars. So I've got here two vocal tracks which I'm putting through one vocal group. It's a fairly standard setup there as you can see. One voice on its own, you've heard. A second voice, this is a complete second take from my myself obviously. Always try and get your vocalist to take two takes of everything because you really do need to have the the doubling up there with the with the power. I'll show you how this uh, this affects the sound. It's uh, it, it is quite marked. What I've done actually as well to point out is I've panned them slightly. Vocal one is panned left, 
16, vocal 2 is panned right 16. Reason for doing that, I'll bring up this uh, graphic that I've brought up in the past. This is the sort of stereo space that I'm working with, and I don't want my vocal to be running mono down the middle where the kick and snare and bass are running. I've moved it slightly left and right just to give space to everything. So um, here we go, this is the vocal clean on its own and then a second vocal clean added in to show you how the, the difference in power really does work well. Revenge is nothing new to me! Fuck them all and let them burn! Clear this world of attention! Pull up in and watch them turn! Running hard is nothing... Some uh, plosive action in there again. These are the clean files before I've tidied them up but uh, uh, if you ignore that you can just hear that there was uh, a really good increase in the power having two voices there. We then move on to the the processing. One last thing I will say actually, if the vocalist has only taken one take of everything, what you, what you would really do, a, a very common trick is, this is the chorus, so I would take the chorus number two uh, that he recorded and bring it back to chorus number one to double it up and vice versa, take chorus one and copy it over to chorus two, so we've got two takes of everything in the end. With verses that wouldn't work obviously, uh, what you would do with something like that is take vocal one, copy the track down to say vocal two. What I would then do is to duplicate what a uh, plugin doubler does, is highlight your file and maybe pitch shift it just by a few cents, just to make it slightly different to the original. You've then got a slight doubling there, but also a slight chorusing effect. If you pan them as I have, maybe 10 to 20 left and right, and add a stereo effect over them, if I show you one here, there is one in Cubase, mono to stereo or stereo enhancer. I'll bring this one over here to show you. You can change the width from it. That widens it out slightly more and stops it sounding so much like a phased or, or chorus effect. That is one way around it if you've only got one take, but wherever possible, do get your vocalist to take more than one take. And obviously, just like with guitars, whack them all through one group, which I've got here called, called Vox. So there we have it. My two takes pan slightly left and right so that they're off centre slightly and give a bit more space and power. And in part two, we will have a look at how to process this group to uh, fill it right out and get it to sit in the mix properly. Hope you join me then. Thanks. Mm -hmm.